getting a prize at the end, did it? Well, I'm not quite sure. I really did expect some chocolate. When Diane and I did our challenge in St David's, we had special safety equipment and qualified help, but nobody should try anything like it without good supervision. The coastline can be very dangerous, so if you fancy a go at coasting and it is brilliant, or abseiling, you should do it at a proper outdoor centre. Diane, I'm not sure you've got the right qualifications to be a deputy manager, I'm afraid. So far around your leisure centre, I've seen very little to convince me you're doing a good job here. I mean, how prepared is your gym for fire? How prepared is it for an outbreak of contagious diseases and chemical spillages and nuclear waste? I don't think you've fully thought this one through, Diane. But it's not just exercise that can help you get fit. What you eat is pretty important too. Experts recommend a balanced diet, so last week, with the help of the Health Education Authority, we asked some children to change their eating habits for a week. So what did you think of your health alternatives, Warren and Amy? Well, the alternatives was all right, but if you're a chocoholic, you find it hard to, um, you find it hard to... Stop eating chocolate, down, right? yeah. Down. Amy? Well, I had to have home with bread and semi skim milk, and I didn't like them, so I'm not going to stick to them. Did you, did you pick up any habits from last week, no? Well, I might cut down on chocolate a bit, because I had to do that a little bit. Good, something positive. Charlene, how did you get on? Well, I had to cut down on salt and eat sugar-free gum, and I think I'm going to keep on cutting down on salt, but I'm going to stick to the ordinary gum in the future. Oh, fine, OK, then we'll argue with that. My, you're a chocoholic, aren't you? How did you get on? It must be hard for you. It was hard to give up on chocolate, but um, I grown used to the fruit, so I think I'm going to eat more fruit than chocolate from that's, now on. That's good. Isaac, how did you get on? Well, most of the stuff here I eat anyway, like the fruit and the veg and stuff like that. I didn't find it very hard at all. So you're a naturally healthy eater? Yeah. Top marks to you. And at the end here, Adam, how did you go on it? Because you were our, our bread taster, weren't you? Yeah, um, I like the home bread, but the salad and the fruit was better. Better. Good things. Well, thank you all very much for coming in. Thanks for being our guinea pigs. Do you all feel better for, the, for trying it out? Yeah. yeah definitely. That's the main thing. Johnny boy, what's that smell? Is it what I think it is? Uh, yes, it's, it's chips, Mr. Britis. I'll have to consult the council bylaws on this one. Diane, over here, please. Yes, Thank Mr. you. Brutus. Right, chips, Diane. Not really leisure centre food, I'm afraid. Too much fat. No, Mr. Britis. I mean, yes, Mr. Britis. Dispose of them, please. Well, one of the easiest ways to keep fit is with a skipping rope. The British Heart Foundation have run campaigns called Jump Rope, encouraging skipping whilst raising funds for heart research. And the best thing about it is that it doesn't take up much space and it's cheap. Hello, Kelly. Why do you like Jump Rope? It's healthy for your heart, fun and social. I totally agree with you. Just carry on doing it. Do you know any tricks here? Do you know some tricks? Do me a trick. Wow, that's brilliant. Excellent, thank you very much. Brilliant. Get to a gym oh. or a leisure centre. Turn around to get that heart pumping. You could always do uh, wheelbarrows or pull-ups. Now, this will help strengthen up those muscles and you can have lots of fun by having races as well. Come on, let's see if you can get there first. <laughs> Well, if you're into looking after your body, there's a new award scheme called Aerobic Sport Awards. And they make sure that you do the exercise properly and that you know why you're doing them. What sort of exercises do you have to do? Well, sit-ups, press-ups, jacks, high leg kicks, balance in the night camp. That's just about everything, isn't it? And that's a bronze sit-up, isn't it? I know that one. What do you do after you've done your bronze medal? Well, the exercises get progressively more difficult. Here's Cathy doing the silver sit-up and Alison doing the gold. And why do you like a scheme where you actually win badges? Well, it gives you something to achieve and something to work towards. I totally agree with you. Thank you very much. Well, once you get started, you can team up with some other people and enter the National School Aerobics Championships, which has regional heats, and the finals are held in Wembley in October. Have a go at this. Well, museums around the country must have been a little bit busier than usual over Easter, partly due to people entering our Museum of the Year competition. The 17,934 entries included nominations all over the country for the museums, from big ones in city centres to small, out-of-the-way ones with unusual collections. The competition in three age groups has some terrific prizes. IBM computers for the first prize winners, 
autofocus zoom lens cameras for the seconds and ravishing museum goodie bags for the thirds, as well as specially printed museum competition jotters for 200 runners up. We've put many of the entries on display and if you spot yours, congratulations, because you're a runner up. The standard of entries was very high and there was a great deal of discussion to pick the overall winners. The three third prizes go to Jessica Crawford, who's seven from Cambridge. Jessica nominated the Ulster Folk Museum, where she says buildings from all over Ireland have been gathered together. The next third prize winner is 10-year-old Gregory Barrett of Chiltington in Sussex, who nominated the Science Museum in London with a very graphic entry that brilliantly uses scientific drawings like this circuit board to publicise the museum. In the top age group, the third prize winner is Sarah Bowles of Lonfield in Kent, who loves a mining museum in Matlock Bath in Derbyshire. The minute you walked in, you could tell it was going to be brilliant, says Sarah, who was brave enough to try the mining shaft out. I didn't know anything about mining before, but I found out how awful it was. Well done to all third prize winners. Well, on to the second prize winners, starting with seven-year-old Martin Warminger of Ilford, who very much enjoyed his visit to the Bethnal Green Museum of Childhood. Second in the eights, nines and tens is Tom Allen from Andover, who nominated the Andover Museum, which as you can see from Tom's entry is obviously bursting with great attractions like dinosaurs and ancient uniforms as well as computers, sounds and music. And in the oldest group, Catherine Rawson from Hall Green in Birmingham, who's 11, won second prize for her fascinating entry all about the Ilfracombe Museum. She says, the area I enjoyed most and where I've spent many hours is the breast rubbing area. Catherine also likes the drawers full of unusual displays of things like old wedding cakes. And apparently she'd like to work at the museum when she gets older. On now to the top prize winners who all win a personal computer, a remarkable entry now from Alex Reader, who's five and comes from Birmingham. She takes first prize in the youngest age group. She nominated the National Fishing Heritage Centre in Grimsby. Her fascinating entry explains how you enter a very hot room, which is the boiler room, how you smell the fish being netted, and how the floor moves as if you're actually at sea. You go through a dark and it is freezing cold and dark because it is on the deck through another door, you can see the fish in a big net. In the eights, nines and tens, the first prize winner is Alistair Dewar, who lives all the way up there in Uria and Kate Ness. Alistair's top museum is the Museum of Childhood in Edinburgh. He enjoyed seeing toys his parents played with now in a museum. Here's how he describes it in his own words. As you walk in the doorway, there are immediately lots of things to see. Dolls, teddy bears and much more, and everything is so colourful. Well done, Alistair. And finally, in the top age group, the first prize winner is Maria Hogan, whose moving and descriptive entry is about her visit to the Maritime Museum of Liverpool. I'm walking down an old cobbled alleyway. The hot, stuffy air smells of bitter ale and rotting vegetables. A dog barks in the darkness, and finally, I cross the wooden gangplank to board my ship Well, the judges loved that entry, as they did all the top winners. So a big well done to all nine, and thanks to everyone who entered for all their very hard work. Absolutely. What happens now is that the three museums in the first prize places, that's the Liverpool Maritime Museum, the National Fishing Heritage Centre, and the Museum of Childhood in Edinburgh, go forward to be judged by our special children's panel of museum experts. And you'll be able to see their report and their decision about the 1993 Children's Museum of the Year on Blue Peter in just a few weeks' time. Oh, it's a busy day today. It's a good job the Blue Peter Leisure Centre is open today because it's a great chance to do some last minute training for this Sunday's fun run. If you're taking part and you're running at the Alexander Stadium in Birmingham, then uh, you'll see me there. Okay, you can stop now, John. <laughs> I'm going to be running in Liverpool and I know one familiar face that I'm going to be seeing because silver medal winning and the gold Blue Peter badge winning Neil Thomas is running at Sefton Park. Derek Redmond will be hoping his hamstring lasts for his fun run at Willen Lake Park in Milton Keynes.
Good job you're not showing the Portugal game. Rangers and Scottish international goalkeeper Andy Gorham will be running in Edinburgh. England's goalkeeper is taking part as well. Chris Woods, still fresh after his two-all draw with Holland. He'll be at Rother Valley Country Park in Sheffield. Yian Evans is well used to scoring tries at Cardiff Arms Park. But this Sunday, the captain of the Welsh rugby team will be fun running round Butte Park. Yian Evans is in. He's done it again. London Marathon winner Eamon Martin will be joining Diane and Bonnie at Basildon. And Eamon Martin, his first ever marathon from Basildon, comes home to win the 1993 race. Who else would you find at the Maidstone Moat Park but Olympic gold medal winning rowers Greg and Johnny Searle? And that is a great achievement. I'm exhausted. Well, good luck to everyone. Even if you're not registered, get sponsored and come along and run. Mr. Bruce, I think I would make a really good deputy manager. Look, I've just got my first aerobic badge. Fascinating, Diane. <clears throat> this is a leisure centre, by the way, not the RSPCA. Now, you probably think all this paperwork's a little bit unnecessary. Well, we had yeah. thought that. My <laughs> only concern is for the children, the safety of the children, the welfare of the children in your centre, all right? After all, children are our one glimpse of eternity. Now, pay attention, everyone. I've completed my inspection, and yeah. I'm afraid you haven't made the Whitbury grade, sadly. Oh, are you sure? But a little bit more work, and one day, very soon, you could all be part of the brotherhood of leisure centre managers, all right? Tell Peter Purvis he owes me a quid, all right? Now, where's oh, well. Shep? Shep, Shep, Shep. Shep, Shep. 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 I beg your pardon, your name is Bonnie, isn't it? Wake up, come on. You're supposed to be watching me. This is how you do it. What? What's he doing asleep? He's asleep. He's asleep, not asleep. All these people working out, he's asleep. I can't believe it.